Hi, I'm beating every PS2 game ever, and today, I'm beating Finding Nemo. The game follows the movie, scene by scene. Every level starts with showing a clip from the movie and then gameplay. Unfortunately, I can't show the movie clips because Disney would be angry and they would own my soul. And I don't want that. Level 1 starts with Nemo excitedly waking up his dad to go to school. Marlin says to try to swim through all the bubble rings along the way. Each level has typically 1-3 to three tasks to complete. These include swimming through all rings, killing all enemies, winning a race, placing pebbles in the correct spot, and bouncing on every platform. Each task you complete gives you a star. None of them are required to beat the game, but I tried to do it during my playthrough because that's just how I play games. The controls are very simple. Left stick to move, move faster with X, square to dash, and interact with objects. Okay, with all that out of the way, back to the game. We find Tad and Sheldon, and they say that Pearl got lost in the cave. We easily find her and lead her out of the cave, and continue past a clan blocking the path. This is also when we find the first pebble task. The majority of these require you to go back and forth to get the colors in the correct spots. Kind of annoying in my opinion. Then Nemo bashes his head into some rocks, and we begin to race to school. This is the first time we have the perspective of the camera in front of us, which I don't really like because it makes it hard to see when the rings are coming up and you can't backtrack because it's an auto scroller. But we win the race and swim through all rings to get two more stars and finish the level. The second level introduces more new stuff. First, collecting shells. I went through the entire game collecting most of the shells I saw and I still have no idea what they're for. So the shells are just for fun, I guess. Second, going in and enemies. You can hide from danger inside of them. Again, I don't really know what they do. When you come out, you're spinning. That's all I know. Also, I only remember seeing a few of them in the entire game, so they are pretty much non-existent. The third thing is actually useful. You can collect Krill, which acts as a shield for when you take damage. So we catch up with the class and continue to follow Mr. Ray. We find some weird bouncy things and bounce on all of them to get a star. Then we get to another area where we kill the last enemy for a star and come across a pebble game, which was very annoying because you have to go in and out of these caves and they didn't really make sense of where you came out of. But I did it and moved on. The last bit was following Mr. Ray again. You have to swim through these rings to keep up with him. Sadly, I missed some bubble rings here so I didn't get the star. However, the level is over. In level 3, the drop off, you start by avoiding hot steam while placing pebbles in the correct spot and killing hermit crabs. Pretty easy, nothing tricky. I quickly got those two stars. After getting more bubble rings, we come across the butt. We have to swim up the anchor while avoiding pufferfish and eels. I don't know if it's just me, but the perspective fell off on this chain. I couldn't tell exactly where the rings were. It was weird. But after a few tries, I got all the rings and touched the butt. Then I had to swim away from the diver trying to catch Nemo. While doing that, I collected the last of the rings and got another star. Nemo gets captured and that ends that quick level. Next up, Mask Chase. We are now controlling Marlin and we are trying to get the diver's mask. This level introduces a time limit. You have to get to the next section of the level within the time to progress. However, there is stuff to do in each section. Thankfully, everything you do is saved if the time runs out, which makes it a lot better. The first part has rings, enemies, and pebbles. I managed to get all of the rings and enemies, but I accidentally moved on without doing the pebbles because I didn't know where the last spot was. Whoops. The next section is pretty easy with more enemies to kill. After a few more sections, I got the enemy star and got into the open water, where I had to avoid all their fish while trying to collect rings. I managed to collect all the rings and beat the level. Moving on to the next level, we meet Dory. This level is really quick and easy. We're following Dory because she saw the boat pass by. But of course, due to her short-term memory loss, she keeps forgetting that she saw the boat and she keeps running away from us. The only thing to do in this level is collect her rings and shells. You can't even die. So I swam forward a lot until I got the ring star and beat the level. Level 6 starts with us controlling Dory and following Bruce to his quote unquote party. Just like the other following sections, you have to avoid obstacles and collect rings to keep up. So I followed him until I got to the bouncing on mines section. Another star is obtainable by bouncing on every mine. However, you can only bounce on a mine three times. Bouncing on it a fourth time causes it to explode. I didn't mean to, but I went right to the end of the section and didn't get close to getting all of them, so I missed the star. There was another following section, which was easy enough. The only weird thing was while swimming through the mines, I was unable to go completely to the side, so I missed some rings. It didn't cause me to lose, it was just odd. So, I collected all the rings while following Bruce and finished the level. Next up is the level that took me the longest. Most levels took 10 or less minutes. This one took me 35 minutes. It was a pain. The first section, we are running away from Bruce. We have to avoid his bites and try to collect rings along the way. I don't like Bruce. There were times where I couldn't tell where he was going to attack, so I went right towards him. Also, depending on how fast you were going, he may end up right in the way of the rings, so I was unable to collect all of them. So, after the first chase section, I had already missed some of the 127 total rings on this level. That's the most rings on any level, by the way. We managed to briefly escape Bruce, and we were inside a locked room in the submarine. This is where I got a real taste of the level. You have to go through all the pipes while avoiding fire and electric eels. This section wasn't bad, but there are multiple more, and as a whole, I did not enjoy it. 
First off, there are many nooks and crannies you can go into that are just unnecessary and waste time for no reason. Second off, fire is annoying because some turns are sudden and you have no time to react to the fire. So you can easily die and have to go back to the start and go through again. Third, the eels are annoying. They are easily avoidable, but they swim right in the path so you have to either backtrack or hide and let them pass, which just wastes more time. I think there are plenty of obstacles in the area. There is no need for the eels. Also, to get through the sections, you have to push a button to open the door. It's easy to do, but some are out of the way and they just make you spend even more time on the level. You also throw in enemies to kill and pebbles to place while avoiding the other stuff and it just makes for a super fun level. I also found out that if you swim in front of the mines, you just blow up with no warning. So that's cool too. I died so many times in the last section because the same checkpoint was used for three rooms. That means that every time you die, you restart way back and have to go through those rooms again and try not to die again. Okay, I'm done complaining. For now. I managed to finally get through that area while getting the enemy in Pebble Star. I had to run away from Bruce once more before getting to the last part of the level. I had to complete a slide puzzle to connect some pipes and finally beat the level. Now, I like puzzles, but for some reason, I just can't figure out slide puzzles. I tried to solve it for a few minutes, but because of all the fun I had throughout the rest of the level, I quickly got annoyed and looked up how to solve it. I know, disgraceful. But honestly, screw this level and its stupid slide puzzle. Anyways, the next level is set when Nemo is in the fish tank at the dentist's office. The main objective here is to find all the other creatures in the tank. It's really easy. You pretty much have to go through the tank and interact with everything you see. You go into the anemone to find Bloat, make a mess to find Jacques, go inside the volcano to find Gurgle, Peach is just on the wall, unlock a chest to make bubbles and find bubbles, and finally, do another slide puzzle to find Deb. While doing that, I also found all of the bubble rings and placed some pebbles to get those stars. And that's the entire level. In level 10, we are back in the ocean looking for the mask. We control Dory and face another time limit due to her memory. First section is simple. Just like any other level, there are rings to collect and enemies to kill. We then get to the unique part of the level, that being the pipe puzzles. Each of these sections contains a series of pipes, either big or small, and you need to use Marlin or Dory to get through. There are also buttons to hit in order to allow Dory to get across. These puzzles aren't hard, but I do like that they are different. During the next pipe section, there is another slide puzzle. I don't understand the obsession with slide puzzles. Could they really not think of another type of small puzzle to put in? At least I know how to be slide puzzles now, I guess. While going back and forth from time sections to the pipes, I managed to kill all the enemies and get a star. Then in the last pipe area, I got the pebble star before finding the mask and beating the level. Next up is the angler chase. It's just like the Bruce chase section. You need to dodge the angler's attacks while Dory is reading the mask and there are rings to collect. And that's it. That's the entire level. Just three chase sections and rings. It took three and a half minutes. Then we are back in the fish tank and we follow Jock to Mount Wanahakalugi. The bubbles for the ceremony are not working, so we have to plug some leaks to divert the pressure. To do that, we have to simply knock some rocks onto the leaks. I plugged the first leaks and was blocked by another stream. There are three tiki heads that you need to use in the correct order to progress. You find that order on the back of this sign. Then I was blocked by another stream. To plug this one, you have to continuously bash your head into a lever to lower a diver and plug it. In the next area, I collect the last ring and find yet another slide puzzle. I seriously don't understand why are there so many slide puzzles. It's kind of stupid. Regardless, I finished the puzzle and fully powered the volcano. I then had to swim through a bunch of rings to complete the ceremony. I think these three symbols represent the fact that you can miss three rings? Not sure. I did beat the level though. Moving on to the jellyfish race. The first section of this level is a race against Dory through the jellyfish. This race is actually different from the others. There are no rings to swim through and you can't win by just swimming. You actually have to use the jellyfish to propel yourself forward. Using the jellyfish also puts you straight through any rings, so that's nice. It took me a few minutes to get the timing right with the jellyfish. If you press X, it just kicks you off. So, you have to press square. I don't know if I was pressing the button too late, but eventually I figured out that hitting square pretty much the moment you hit the jellyfish works. After winning that race, we get to another bouncing section, and let me tell you, this sucked. There are 128 to jump on for the star. That's not the annoying part though. The annoying part is these tiny jellyfish that are also bouncing around. If you hit them, you go back to the beginning. And I never saw any sort of pattern at all from them. They really seem to enjoy going directly into my path no matter which way I went. They also like jumping to the same jellyfish I'm going to while I'm mid-jump, so I have no chance of dodging them. I think these little guys do not like the fact that I'm using their friends bouncy heads. It took me 10 minutes just to get to the end of these jellyfish. Then there was another easy race section that I won and beat the level. We then go back into the fish tank to begin training with Gil. To start, we follow Gil. 
Then, we bounce on some snails. You have to hit them fast enough so they're all on the ground at the same time. A little annoying, but easy enough. Then we get to the main part of the level, where we have to bounce a ball through blue hoops. You have to avoid letting the ball hit any spikes, or it'll pop and go back to the start. You don't lose any progress though, so that's nice. It was a little tedious, but not too difficult. There are also only 10 bubble rings to collect from the star. After getting the ball through all hoops, we swim with Gil a little longer and beat the level. Then, we are in the East Australian Current. The first section of the level involves you following Dory through the current while collecting rings and shells and dodging turtles. It was easy, but I failed a few times due to the time limit because I was making sure I got all the rings. Then Dory is playing hide and seek with the baby turtles. So we have to find them by jumping on the backs of all the other turtles. They don't seem to really mind, so that's cool. The final section was a race against Dory and the baby turtles to the exit of the current. That's another easy level finished, and we are again in the fish tank where we are completing our escape plan. To do this, we have to put 5 pebbles in the filter. The first pebble I get is inside the volcano. You have to put it in the correct port to get it to the top and then take it to the filter. The second pebble was inside a scuba helmet. You simply have to dash into the helmet to open it and get the pebble. The third pebble was inside of the big clam. The fourth pebble was on the pirate ship. Before the fifth pebble, I found the ball for all the blue rings. This time, the ball isn't needed to beat the level. It's just for another star. I got all of the rings though. Then I found the last pebble all the way on the left side inside of a skull. Just like the second pebble, you had to dash into the skull to get the pebble out. All of the pebbles are in the filter and the level is over. On to level 17. The whale chase. The level starts with running away from the whale and there are rings to collect. What I didn't know is that if the whale catches you, it swallows you and you can't go back to the first section. So I immediately got swallowed and missed rings right off the bat. In the whale, we start by bouncing on all of its taste buds. It's actually kind of gross, but I bounce on all of them for the start. Then we swim down the whale's throat and avoid toxic gas. I don't know what that's supposed to be. I'm no expert, but I feel like whales don't just have toxic gas spewing out of their throats. Further into the whale, we have to continue to dodge gas and there are enemies to kill. It does seem a little rude to kill creatures that are already being digested by the whale, but oh well, they're in my way. After dodging all the obstacles, Dory and Marlin race through the whale's intestines. I think. I don't know what part of the whale we are in. I have a feeling it's probably not accurate to a real whale though. Anyways. The race was the final stretch before we escaped the whale and finished the level. Then after a successful escape attempt, Nemo finds himself in the sewers. We need to get to the end of the sewers to get back to the ocean. Personally, I've never been in a sewer, but I feel like they don't have big spinning wheels of doom in them. Maybe it's an Australian thing. After dodging those wheels, we come across this section of strong current. I got lost here. After going to all the areas and collecting all the rings, I had no clue where to go. I just kept going in circles over and over again until I finally realized that there's a small grate towards the start that you have to dash into, then another one right after that. For some reason, I just couldn't see that. So I kept going deeper into the sewer killing crabs and dodging more toxic gas. These Australian sewers are brutal. We then swim through another tunnel to get to another section. Here we had to use the rising water to jump over these walls. Then we had to dodge more death wheels and we found even more spiky stuff. This is another part of the level that I got stuck on. These walls move up and down and you have to swim from one to the next, which I did. At the end, there's just some krill and a dead end. I could see another open part on the top of the last wall, but I didn't know how to get to it. I just kept going back and forth making no progress for several minutes before I gave up and consulted Google. All you have to do was go back to the beginning and wait for the wall to come down further and there's just another path. I feel kinda dumb for that one, not gonna lie. After the wall is another strong current section with some pebbles. I struggled with these pebbles for a bit before moving on. Then it was just a little swim to the end of the level where I learned that I missed three rings somewhere which sucks, but on the bright side, Nemo is free again. And we are finally on to the last level of the game. This starts with Dora getting caught in a net with many other fish. There are two things to do on this level, collect all rings and free the fish. Nemo uses his mega brain and gets the idea for all the fish to swim down. So then we have 70 seconds to interact with Dory 10 times and tell everybody to swim down. After interacting a few times, debris starts to fall off the ship and you have to avoid it. It's a little annoying because if you get hit, you have to restart. I failed a bit and had to hear Nemo say swim down like 50 times. Swim down! But after not too long, I did it and all the fish swam down and were free. Then Nemo is finally reunited with his dad and they live happily ever after. I managed to beat the game in a little over 3 hours and got 35 out of the 60 stars. I will now give my rating. Other than a few annoying parts, the overall gameplay was fine. I enjoyed the variety of levels throughout the game. I also like that you play as Nemo, Marlin, and Dory. So I give the gameplay a 6 out of 10. The story of the game was just the plot of the movie, so I'm biased. I used to watch Finding Nemo all the time as a kid. It was probably my favorite movie. It just brings back so much nostalgia. Nothing else to be said. 10 out of 10. The dumb stupid slide puzzles get a negative 2 out of 10 because the first one 
gave me a headache. Thank you very much for watching this video. It really means a lot. Please leave a like and a comment and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.